Jihu becomes king. In our last story, we learned about Elisha's interaction with the future king of Syria. Elisha was able to see in him a deep darkness that would cause death and destruction to many in Israel. Now we learn about Jehu. God anoints and raises up Jehu to be a minister of justice for all those who had suffered under King Ahab and Jezebel, inspired by the book of 2 Kings. Hello, this is Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In the last episode, we saw how God brought famine to Israel, a consequence for their self-reliance and forgetting that He was their provider. In that time, God protected the Shunammite woman and her son, and after the famine, He restored all she had lost. We also witnessed the murder of the Syrian king Ben-Hadad, killed by the servant Hazael, who then ascended to power. He would be a cruel king and wreak havoc and devastation on Israel in the ensuing years. Today, we hear how God anoints a new king to bring justice to a kingdom that had suffered greatly under King Ahab, his evil wife Jezebel, and their family. Let's listen now to the Word of God. The reign of King Ahab had come to an end. The corrupt and volatile king had passed into the dust along with his forefathers, to take his place was his son, Joram. God saw Joram's heart as soil for the seeds of his father and mother to grow. The corruption of Ahab and the wickedness of Jezebel had dug its roots deeply into him. The Lord would not have their line continue. He would not allow the compromising spirit of Ahab to sicken the children of Israel any longer. So God spoke to Elisha as he once did before. He decided he would rise up Jehu, the commander of Israel's army, to lead his people. So Elisha called one of his students to him, a young and promising prophet who studied and ministered under him. Prepare for travel, Elisha said in a hushed tone. The young man saw Elisha stuff a flask of oil into a knapsack and hand it to him. Take this flask and anoint the new king of Israel. The young prophet gasped at the news. He knew that proclaiming a new king was risky. Elisha looked intently at him and said, Go to Ramoth Gilead. There you will find Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat. Take him into a private place away from people. Then anoint him. The young man took the oil and loaded up his horse. Before he departed, Elisha spoke once more. Once you anoint him, open the door and run for your life. The prophet nodded and departed with haste towards Ramoth Gilead. The young prophet rode swiftly, taking no breaks for food or water. He did not desire to draw any attention to himself or speak with anybody but Jehu. When he made his way into the city, the young man placed his hood over his head, partially covering his face. The king's men filled the streets, People loyal to the crown of Ahab and Joram would notice a prophet of Elisha. The prophet knew Jehu would be found at the barracks where the men of Israel gathered and trained. He approached inconspicuously and found Jehu sitting among his men and other army officers. The young prophet cleared his throat and said, I have an urgent message for you, commander. Jehu stood to his feet. He was taller than the prophet had imagined. His face was rough from years of war. However, his eyes were different. They were kind, warm. They were the eyes of a man determined to serve others. Which one of us do you need to speak with? Jehu asked. With you, my lord, the prophet said with a slight bow. The two of them left the others into the safety of Jehu's house. The young man revealed himself to be a prophet of God and pulled the oil out of his knapsack. Without a word, he began to pour the oil over Jehu's head. The oil had no fragrance, as to not draw any unwanted attention. However, the symbolism was clear. Oil was a symbol of anointing. God's Spirit had chosen Jehu as he had with David so many generations ago. The old songs of King David resonated in Jehu's mind. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. 
Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. After the young prophet anointed Jehu, he spoke, saying, You have been chosen by God. I anoint you as king over Israel. By you, the wicked line of Ahab and Jezebel will be cut off. In this way, the Lord avenges all the evil and murder done by Ahab and Jezebel. As promised, dogs will feast on Jezebel's corpse, and her descendants will be forgotten forever. With those last words, the young prophet smiled, bowed, and ran for his life back to Elisha. Jehu paused for a moment. His heart began to beat faster. He had just been anointed king over Israel, king over God's people as David once was so many years ago. Was he worthy of such a calling? How would it come to pass? So many questions swelled in his mind. However, he decided it would be best to not linger for much longer. He did not want to raise suspicion. Jehu came back to his men. What did the madman want with you? One of them asked. Jehu casually poured some wine and broke off a piece of bread and began to eat. You know how men like that are, he said with a wave of his hand. They babble on with nonsense and then vanish. A small chuckle filled the table. However, one of the men was not convinced Jehu was being forthright. Something is clearly bothering you, he said. Tell us what he said. Jehu felt uncomfortable, but decided he would be truthful about what had taken place. If it truly was nonsense, his men would say so. He told me I was to be anointed as the next king of Israel, Jehu said with a jovial smile. Jehu fully expected a laugh to roar from the table. Instead there was silence. The men sat for a while, then they all stood to their feet and walked to the bare steps beside them. One by one they removed their cloaks. After this they led Jehu to the top of the steps. Jehu watched as all the men in the barracks began to bow before him. Jehu's heart was overwhelmed with amazement. Then the men blew their ram's horns. The sound echoed for the whole city to hear. Jehu is king, they shouted. Jehu is king, they chanted. The sounds of their chants filled the city streets. The Lord had primed the hearts of every citizen to desire a new king, and now they all gladly joined in the singing of Jehu's praises. Their voices shook the city. The young prophet was on his way out of the city gates when the chanting reached his ears. Without looking back, he smiled and continued to ride. Meanwhile, on the battlefield of Ramoth-Gilead, King Joram fought alongside the kingdom of Judah against Syria. The battle was fierce, and both sides were struggling to gain any ground. The sun had begun to set, and both armies were ready to retreat to fight another day. However, in a final push of the Syrian army, Joram was slashed on his chest. Joram retreated back to his tent to heal from his wounds. They were not deep or deadly, but they would take some time to heal. The next day, Jehu traveled to the battlefield to face King Joram. A righteous intensity had come over Jehu. All the witchcraft, idol worship, and murder that had happened under Joram's watch would not go unpunished. In that moment, Jehu knew he was a vessel of God's justice. Jehu rode till about fifty yards away from Joram's tent. My lord, I see a company of troops approaching, the king's servant told Joram. Send a rider to ask if they come in peace, the king said, holding his chest. Joram did not want any surprises. The king of Judah was also there with him. The two kings were aligned by blood. Since the king of Judah, Ahaziah, was Ahab's grandson. The horseman rode quickly to Jehu. The king wants to know if you come in peace? The horseman asked. Jehu looked at the man with a white-hot intensity. He stood on his chariot and pointed his spear towards the young horseman. What do you know of peace? Jehu said. If you truly want peace, stand behind me. The horseman was no fan of the king and knew Jehu well, so he stayed with Jehu instead of returning. My lord, the messenger has met the man, but has not returned, the watchman said. So the king sent another horseman. Do you come in peace? the second man asked. 
Jehu remained upright and strong. What do you know of peace? If you desire peace, come join me, he said. So the horseman did as he was asked and joined Jehu. The watchman was confused as he watched the men join Jehu. This one has not returned either, my lord. It must be Jehu, for he is driving his chariot like a madman. King Joram lifted his sore body out of his bed and put on his armor. Get my chariot ready, quickly, he shouted. So the king of Israel and Judah went out to meet Jehu. The men stood only a dozen yards apart from one another. King Joram did his best to come off kingly. He did not want Jehu to see his wounds. Do you come in peace, Jehu? Jehu scoffed for a moment and opened his arms. How can there be peace? he asked. How can there be peace when idolatry and witchcraft spreads across our land like a plague? How can there be peace when the blood spilled by your mother has not yet been avenged? King Joram knew what was about to take place. He did not respond to Jehu. Rather, he turned his chariot around to run. It is treason, Ahaziah, he shouted to the king of Judah. Treason! Run! Jehu watched as the king rode away. He drew his bow slowly. The arrow was placed firmly in his right hand. He closed one eye, honing in on his cowardly target. He drew a deep breath, then released. The arrow whistled through the air, hitting Joram directly in between his shoulder blades. Blood splattered across the front of the king's chariot. Slowly, Joram sank down dead in his chariot. Throw him on the plot of land where Ahab and Jezebel murdered Naboth and Jezreel. God promised that he would avenge the blood of that innocent man and his family, Jehu ordered. On the corner of his eye, Jehu saw the king of Judah running away. His partnership in Yoram's wickedness would not go unpunished either. Shoot him, Jehu yelled as he pointed. A storm of arrows shot from behind Jehu into the air. The king of Judah fell to the floor and was taken away to be buried with his ancestors. As we begin today's passage, God's Spirit is moving again to bring justice and righteousness back to Israel. God instructed Elisha that a new king was to be anointed, so the prophet called one of his students and sent him to Ramoth-Gilead to find Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, who had been king of Judah. Like his father, Jehu walked righteously with the Lord, and God handpicked him to lead the people of Israel out of the mire and darkness King Ahab had plunged the kingdom into for many years. Elisha instructed the young prophet to take a jar of oil to the place where Jehu was training with other soldiers in order to call Jehu to a private place and anoint him with oil. Then he was told to flee quickly. Naming a new king was a dangerous business, as anything that threatens the power of the wicked. When the young prophet arrived, he called Jehu to a quiet place alone. And in 2 Kings 9.6, we read, So he arose and went into the house, and the young man poured the oil on his head, saying to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anoint you king over the people of the Lord over Israel. We can only imagine the thoughts going through Jehu's mind in that moment. As he continued to listen, the man told him he would put an end to the house of Ahab, avenging the blood of the prophets Jezebel had struck down. It was a heavy calling, and one Jehu did not take lightly. For he desired to see worship of the Lord return to his people, just as his father had led Judah to turn back to God. Sadly, under the reign of Ahaziah of Judah, the southern kingdom had once more turned to idolatry as well. But now God was about to deal with both kings, Joram of Israel and Ahaziah of Judah, through one man, the newly appointed and anointed Jehu. Jehu was at first reluctant to tell his soldiers what the prophet had done. But when pressed, he revealed that he had been chosen as the next king of Israel. His men quickly rose and laid their garments under his feet and cried out, saying, Jehu is king. Jehu is king. He would need the support of strong and loyal men as he was about to lead a difficult nation. Jehu wasted no time. He knew God desired for his people to abandon their idolatrous ways, so he set off to find Joram, who was on the battlefield with Ahaziah, king of Judah, fighting Syria. 
Joram was wounded in the battle and vulnerable. When Jehu arrived, he sent a messenger to ask if Jehu came in peace. Jehu rightly called Joram out, saying he knew nothing of peace. The messenger could tell Jehu was a different man, more honorable and righteous, so he stayed with him. Joram sent another man, and this one, too, gave his loyalty to Jehu. Finally, Joram and Ahaziah went in person to see Jehu. Joram asked if he sought peace. Don't miss what Jehu said. He told the king that there could be no peace as long as the people were led astray, given over to idolatry and its evil. There could be no peace as long as Jezebel's witchcraft poisoned the land. When we seek peace, we must be willing to turn to God, whether it is personal peace, as we turn to God through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, or, or peace with others. We must abandon all things that bring disobedience and dishonor to God in our lives. We make peace to God through our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us on the cross. So, Jehu saw through Joram's words and rejected him. Joram then tried to flee, but Jehu shot him as he fled, an arrow piercing his chest. Joram was buried symbolically in Naboth's vineyard, the very one Jezebel had murdered the man to give the vineyard to Ahab, thus avenging the man's blood just as God had promised. Ahaziah also fled but was caught and killed as well. Jehu still had work to do, and the next time we'll hear how God finally brings judgment upon the wicked queen Jezebel. Dear God, we thank you that you raise up righteous service in your time, a righteous service like Jehu to bring justice and righteousness back to your people. Help us like Jehu to be filled with righteous passion to do what you have called us to accomplish in our lives. Thank you for your anointing and appointing and your calling in each of our lives to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. This is Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make prayer a priority along with Bible study in your life. And if you enjoy this podcast, share it with someone you love. If you want more resources as to how you can live the Christian life in fullness and in victory, be sure to visit jackgram.org. Once again, for free resources as to how you can begin living the Christian life, go to jackgram.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.